Good evening. Good evening. Um, so we've just been talking about this uh, story, and I can't think the last time I put this episode on, these episodes on, uh, to watch them. We watched it in sort of two chunks today, and I wasn't massively looking forward to it, and with good reason, because. Shit. <laughs> well, I think. I think this is an average Doctor Who story, which is then dragged down by two things. First of all, it's a two two episode. If you can do an average two episode story, then that is poor, because that is one sixth of your series dragged down by an average story. Then throw into the mix the fact it's a Dalek story. Now there's been plenty of poor Dalek stories, average Dalek stories, but in recent times, and I'm talking from. Uh, Baker onwards, Tom Baker onwards. Dalek stories have been pretty good on the whole. The weakest one's probably been Destiny of the Daleks, and even that one was, you know, okay. Um, but this was just such a bizarre Doctor Who story. Now, in a change to my usual schedule, I've actually gone away and read the Tatwood review in about time and I've scanned over the Sander for one. I think Tadwood's got some interesting things to say and Sander for does uh, her usual thing <laughs> of providing a redemptive review of a story uh, in an almost willfully difficult way and fair play to her because she's far cleverer at this than I am. But um, so it was not particularly helpful. Here's the thing that I think makes this story or the things. First of all, everything is bang average. Um, performances are bang average. I think the design is average. I think that there's some weird choices made with editing, some re really weird directorial flourishes, or lack thereof. And I've not done research, don't know who's d directed this, or whatever else like that. But there's just odd things that don't square up. So, for example, it feels as if the research into this story wasn't going back to look at flipping 30s art deco cinema, yada, 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 but to watch Bugsy Malone. Now, I like Bugsy Malone yeah, a I lot. I could have been innocent, that I don't want it to be. But, I mean, you've called your lead sort of uh, guest star Tallulah. And with the best friend in the world, I don't know this actress. I think there's Helen Raison, and I'm sure she's been in other stuff, but my God, this performance does nothing. Does absolutely nothing. And it is so demoralising. All the American accents, bar a couple, are just are so off-putting. One more so than others, and I'll come to that in a moment. I have to say that um, the head guy of Hooverville, who's an actor who I've seen in lots of other things, um, on this watching was, was a, you know, it was a bit more redemptive performance. I quite enjoyed that, to be honest. And I have to say, and, and Liv did pick me up on this because I may just have kidded myself, Andrew Garfield in this, uh, formerly of this parish as Spider-Man, um, I really enjoyed it. And I, But again, is it because I just saw him and thought, oh, it's Andrew Garfield, I can trust this performance? I think it, I think it was good, though. I, you know, whatever. Um, I remember when this story came out that the big uh, cliffhanger was revealed by the Radio Times. There you go. That's looking back in the day. I'm pretty sure I was in a... Um, Dalek sat on the front. Yeah, uh, and it was, um, I was in Worksop, or I was in Mansfield Woodhouse or somewhere like that, and I remember seeing it and thinking, oh God, that looks crap. Um, with good reason, it's because it looks crap. And everything, oh, here's, this is gonna sound mean. I think everything about that is ill-conceived. So I think that the realization of it visually is poor, like really, really poor. Um, heads are stupid or something. Oh my gosh, we'll get onto them in a minute. Um, I'm not, look, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for, for all, you know, manifestations of Doctor Who to take place here, but I cannot deal with a, a Dalek with an American accent. Now, I'm really sorry if any of you are from uh, the States. I hope you're doing well. Um, but it just doesn't square with me. Then his crisis of conscience towards the end makes no sense whatsoever because if it comes from a ruthless uh, place whereby he um, recognises that they need to change to survive, then he shouldn't come across as such a sap. And if it's the fact that he's become more human, well, the guy that he's become more human with was a knob end in the first place. So why on earth, what was it about it that made that Okay, the pigs, as Liv has suggested, are absolutely ridiculous. What a stupid idea that is. It just looks stupid. 
And if I'm supposed to buy into, is his name Laszlo? The pig who's only half uh, pig. Yes, I can't be getting all of these teeth here. All the rest of it, I can just about get, but that's flipping teeth sticking up now. It can look absolutely bonkers. The doctor's moral code in this is all over the flipping shop. The Daleks have taken countless people, wiped them clean, and then the doctor at the end said, yeah, yeah, all right, I'll fill them full of Dalek and take you to an alien planet. Yeah, yeah, let's do that crazy thing. Absolute bobbins. Now, that being said, Tenant, this is the moment where I've just gone, all right, any moment that with Tenant in is good. And the doctor that it reminds me of most of all, which doctor does it remind me of most of all? Um, <clears throat> Would you like to... No, it's Tom Baker. Because oh. any Tom Baker story you watch is better because Tom Baker's in it. Right? You, and if Tom Baker's on screen, you're like, oh, the doctor's here, fine. And I know there's some exceptions, you know, there's sometimes when Baker goes a bit too far, but it's still bloody Tom Baker. I think Tennant's probably a better actor than Tom Baker. And now, whenever Tennant's on screen... Jake Tennant's a better actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whenever Tennant's on screen, he makes that moment of Doctor Who better. And even when he's being told, because he's got a script to read, that what he's doing makes no sense whatsoever, and, you know, doesn't quite square with the character that we know, he's still David Tennant, and he can still make it work. If, by this point, you are not bought in to this guy being the Doctor, then he's never going to win you over. Because even within this story, which honestly, for me at least, I don't want to be mean, but this is an absolute um, uh, paragon of mediocrity, um, Tennant is making this work whenever he's on screen, okay? Now, the problem of Martha again. Oh. Libby's really struggling with Martha. I'm over Martha, can she just die already? I just... <laughs> Not the actress, that would be mean. I just, the programme is setting her up to fail because I cannot have respect for somebody who is pining for some, he kissed you in the first story and he told you it was just, you know, I've had some magnificent kisses my wife. When? When was the last time? You never kiss me anymore. You hate me, you won't love you anymore. But... Like, at no point would I expect her to turn around after kissing her. Oh, my God, I will follow you anywhere. Ah. So <laughs> this guy's taking her through time, taking her through space. Is that not enough for her? Exactly. Just stop pining well, after him. Being a doctor ain't all it could... Oh, after. jeez, man. Is that it? Well, she can. scene with Tallulah and um, <laughs> Martha. <laughs> my name is Tallulah. That scene is one of the flattest bits in New Who so, so far, and I don't want to be cruel because both these actresses are fine actresses, done many things, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, my gosh. Oh, the other bit that gets me is when Martha's going across the stage to a not very good Murray Gold song, and just, I don't know if it's the directing or the, just what was that? It was the flattest thing. God, it was maddening. I mean, Oh, and the other thing, oh, here we go, sorry. The visual effects in this are appalling, right? They're clearly looking at a green screen and going, oh, look at the statue of, uh, no, look at the, um, I was gonna say Trump Tower, Empire State Building. Look at Trump, uh, the Empire State Building. Yeah, 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 whatever. You're clearly not looking at the Empire State Building. Nobody, when this was on, is gonna buy into that. Now, I know that's ridiculous because there's been many a time in Doctor Who when I know it's a visual effect, but, in those instances, if the story's been good enough, you go with it. It's got to be something to drag you through. And this weird mishmash of Dalek story, historical story. I mean, there is a brilliant thing to, you know, there is a, the kernel of something coming out of this. But, but it, it is Helen Rayner, I'm sure. Or is it Jacqueline Rayner? But whatever their name. Um, um, I think they've been dealt such a bum hand here because how are you going to make that work? It just, it's just this crazy mishmash. And so you've got all these visual effects and then... And it really bugged me because all the way through it's, oh, my name is Tallulah. Yeah, it's Tallulah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bugs him alone. We've seen Bugs him alone. Three L's, one H. Three L's, one H. Yes, grand. It doesn't actually have to spell it, though, either. Uh, but the Dalek slaves have got Dalek guns. All they need is Dalek guns, right? You don't need to do anything. And they're made to look like flipping Bugs him alone Tommy guns, firing custard pies. <laughs> oh, dear. It's just so mad, dude. Uh, your high body count. I think a high body count is often 
sign of lazy Doctor Who. Because it, when it's a small body count, you care about the characters, that's much more impactful. I find it frustrating because it's a Dalek story and, I want, and this could be that continuation. Oh, it's the cult of Scar and let's make this a thing. Then what do we do? We kill two of them. We have one of them end up with just the most ridiculous, oh, and, and one's disappeared off. Now, obviously that's gonna pay off and that'll be great later on. But I tell you the bits, the, the, the very best bits, the very best bits are the bits in the sewer when the Daleks and Ted are on screen together. And they don't even interact, but it's just Tennant talking about Daleks. is absolutely brilliant. That's the best bit. And then you get bloody libbly sec nonsense. Gee. Libbly. Oh, I don't know. Skibbity. It bothers me because this is oh. only our third scene, uh, third series of Doctor Who. And already we've got too many episodes that are below par. That's yeah, not fair, is, is it? Worst this this is the worst so far. And then... Oh, well, we'll talk about the next one next time anyway. But there's just no buzz. Well, there is a buzz, because this tenant, and tenant's amazing. But he's having to work hard here. He's being made to work harder than tenant should be able to work hard. He's an old man now. Leave him alone, he's not that old. He's only a bit older than me, but there we go. Anyway, farewell. <laughs>